This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Gardner versus Dix. You all have been together for six years. You have two kids together. There was some infidelity early in your relationship, but you got past that. You're now engaged to be married. But this engagement that started on a mountaintop could very well go off a cliff, depending on what happens in this courtroom today. Is that right, Ms. Gardner? Yes. Right. You've initiated this case. Tell us why, please. There's been some warning signs. He's very flirtatious. He takes that flirtatious thing about himself outside of the house. Uh, even I have reason to suspect that he's doing these types of things at work when you're supposed to just be making money and taking care of your family. So he's working at work. <laughs> working at work, exactly. All right, Mr. Dix, are you working at work? Yeah. If no, it is. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> and I'll just go in there to just work. Like, every day I go in, you know, have you... But Ms. Gardner thinks you're cheating. What do you have to say about those allegations? Yeah, there's... Yeah, it haven't really went past anything. That's because, a like, lie. any... If you say that's a but... lie, I believe that when you step outside of your relationship, you your mood changes, how you interact with the person changes, everything's different. So that's what woke up my woman's intuition. It's just the difference in the way that he was dealing with me and handling me. And so you've seen this difference, right? And you think Mr. Dix is giving it to somebody else? Correct. Okay. So, tell me what you've seen that actually proves he's cheating. One day, when I was getting ready to go to work, I hear his phone go off. So, you know, I turn around like, okay, you know, that's kind of strange. So, I turn around, and of course, the trust issues are there. If I trusted him, I would have just kept walking out the door, but I didn't trust him. So, it was strange to you that his phone rang when you were going out the door? I mean, his phone probably rings a lot. I mean... No, it doesn't. That's the thing. So, it alarmed me. It was right at the moment that I walked out the door. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, who knows my schedule? Exactly. Like, okay, it's call the person. That's what she's thinking is that he's like, she leaves at this time, so the person, she got, the person got ahead of themselves. But that's, given right. that could be a coincidence. <laughs> well, it could be, but when you already on high alert, you're like, what? Right. What is this? Okay, and I, then I, I, hear... I looked in his phone and I saw the text messages between him and a woman saying, would you like to come over to a house that, you know, I invested in, you know, for us to, like, our first starter family home, everything, and... He's inviting this woman and over? And you're inviting a woman over there. Exactly. All right. So, Mr. Dix, I guess it wasn't just a coincidence. I guess Earth. your phone's going off at that time for a particular reason. No. Who's this woman you invited over? Yeah, it was somebody, but, you know, they didn't come over and, like, I was <laughs> testing them. I was testing them. Yeah, Do you hear... Wait, 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 wait. Do it you hear the bad. words that are coming yeah. out of your mouth? Yeah, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it, it, it was... was it, it, it was somebody. I did text yeah. them. They didn't come over, so no harm, no foul. Okay, so... Right? Just, wait, wait, wait. Right? <laughs> Way back here, Mr. Color, when I texted them, that might be okay. But when you invited them over, that's, you know, Is that what you drawing this line? Is that where you drawing that, the line? This is the line right here. I invited them over. Because if they had come over, just the question is, what happens? It was just a friend, like... And I'm not Was it a female friend? Came over. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. Like, like, on everything, like, it was just a female friend, but then nothing... was nothing going to happen no, because, because, I saw like... text messages also approaching her sexually, um, you know, telling her what you wanted to do to her, you know, sexually, what you wanted her to do to you. I saw those text messages, and I also saw calls between you two to in your call log. Yes, you did. No, I did. About I, your I, face. I, I... So, Mr. Dix, are you giving this woman just step-by-step -step instructions? I want you to come no. over, and then I want no. you to do this, and then I'm gonna do this, is that... You just no. gotta... Uh, just the manual oh. just laid out there. No, I didn't have no no step, no no plan A through Z. Nothing. You're lying. Like, okay, no, but here's I'm the not. thing. What you want to do, to do Mr. Dix, what you're missing <laughs> is you may not, and I'm not saying you didn't, but you may not have had a plan, but you don't know what her plan was. Right. And she got you home alone. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, I, this is a, uh, an argument, a conversation Mr. Cullen and I've had 
over the years about how men don't recognize that sometimes you getting trapped in your own trap. Yeah. Right. So, Ms. Gardner, is there anything else that makes you think that Mr. Dix is hunting for another woman? He has a habit of being messy. He... One day, I got a phone call from him while he's at work, and he tells me that uh, there's, you know, some guy confronting him. So, me being his woman, being very protective, and also not wanting his job to be affected, I was worried. So, he did not tell me to come down there, but I took it upon myself. So, when I got down there, I was approached by the male that he was having an altercation with. He explained to me the situation, why he confronted Marcus, and it's because his girlfriend at the time, he sent that girl a penis picture. Mr. Dix did? Yes. So, (laughs) of course, her man got upset, confronted him at the job, and his mouth paid the price. So, did you send her a picture of your privates? Yeah, the way... I wait, didn't wait, wait, really wait. send her. Like, no, 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 you don't. Know. Wait, wait, hold it. Mr. Dix. Now we know where the name comes from, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Here's my thing. Exactly. Is that a yes or a no? Because you can't kind of send one of those pictures. You either do or you don't. It was no purpose. Because, like, we were getting into it. Like, we who? Me and Sunisia. Okay. Like, we would never, like, when we get into it, she always wound up leaving me. Okay, she... speed this along and get you to the part where you pressed send. Okay, send so a picture on. of your product. So I was on... And it was accidental. Like, I was in my phone, you know, and I would just, like, scroll, and then, like, when it stopped, and then I... Is this I got some a kind of penis roulette you're doing? It's to be an accident. It, okay, wait. No, wait, 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 no, 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 hold on. Like, up. her, like... Is this, is this some kind of penis roulette you're doing? You take a picture, no. <laughs> you scroll down your phone, it roulette, hit, and that's what gets it? There's a 50-50 chance that it might have been somebody that I worked with, and it was, so... Okay, if this wasn't enough, has there been anything else? Yes. Okay. We had another situation. One day, this girl, we were... We were, you know, bickering at the time and everything like that. You mean you two were? Yes, we were. Okay. Yeah, and I did that. And so, after that, I went outside and I was trying to calm down and everything like that. That's when my friend came outside and she... Uh, the girl confronted me about what he was doing. She said that he was being very flirtatious with her. He was making sexual passes at her. She said they touched each other sexually. And I did, you know, ask a couple people up there because, you know, he thinks everybody's his friend. And the people he talks to the most, the funny thing is they're the ones that talk to me the most. They doing this. Behind his back. I I don't say nobody up there is a friend. Like, nobody is a friend. I don't hang out with nobody. When I go to work, then I come home. Nobody from work come over there. I don't got nobody number. Like, I don't hang out with nobody. But, Mr. Dix, you're doing doing everything. You may not hang out with him outside of work, but it sounds like you're doing everything at work. You're flirting. You all are sending text messages. All this is going on at work. Ms. Gardner, I see that you brought a witness with you. Yes. All right. Ma'am, would you stand, please, behind the podium? All right, and tell us your name. My name is Mira. All right, your last name? Jenkins, uh, Mira Jenkins. All right. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, uh, what is the nature of your relationship to Ms. Gardner and Mr. Dix? Um, I know them through a family member, but, um, I began to, um, hang out with them more last year. So, what is it that you've observed that we need to know about? Marcus, like she said, he's really flirtatious. He was really flirtatious. Um, I know one of my friends, um, she used to tell me that he, um, used to text her asking her to please her orally. She was actually my friend, but I was actually, I was friends with her too, so, you know, I used to tell her, like, don't do that. Like, he got an old lady, you know? If somebody don't want to talk to you no more, why, okay, yo, let me talk to you right quick. Yo, I don't want to talk anymore or something like that instead Mr. of just... But you're missing the point. You. You're missing no. the point. Well, I, I think Hell that's... Yeah. Pro- what's the point? The point is, why are you writing about sexual activity 
that's the problem. It's not that she had the uh, that she had the gall to say I don't like what's going on. It shouldn't have been anything going on to begin with. Right. Right. All right. So, do you believe that Mr. Dix is cheating? I mean, yeah. You do? Yeah, just from the things that I've seen, I feel like if he's willing to, like, flirt with me knowing that I know his old lady... And we hang out often. Period. Then he would do it with... He'll mess around with anybody. Right. All right, Ms. Jenkins, thank you very much. You can have a seat, please. So, here's the question I have, Ms. Gardner. If you find out that Mr. Dix is, in fact, cheating, what happens? If I find out... Well, when I find out the truth, I believe whichever direction it leads, it, it'll help guide me and give me that, I guess, push and, you know, to move forward, whichever direction that is. You understand what's at stake here? Yes, sir. Because you've heard Ms. Gardner. You know how she feels. Yeah. And it's come to this point. Well, this is what we got. I think we got enough. One, we have the penis picture, and then we have the phone text messages indicating that he invited a woman over while she was at work. For yeah. all of these reasons, Ms. Gardner feels pretty sure that Mr. Dix is cheating. She's here for clarity so she can figure out where do I go from here. But the one thing is for sure, there will be no marriage until she finds out what's going on. To help her get that clarity, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, we will call certified polygraph examiner Tommy Platt and forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Long, please escort our expert team. <laughs> good day, gentlemen. How are you all? Good, Your Honor. Great, sir. It's good to see you. Now, Mr. Wolf, you performed a forensic voice analysis of Mr. Dix. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. And, Mr. Platt, you performed a polygraph examination, correct? Yes, sir. You asked Mr. Dix a series of questions, and he gave you answers. Yes, sir. And you each analyzed those answers, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. Let's take a look at the forensic voice analysis. Did you have sexual intercourse with your coworker whom you sent a photo? No. And, Mr. Platt, you asked the identical question, correct? Yes, sir, Your Honor. And what was his response? He stated no. Mr. Wolf, what did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> Told you. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Platt, what did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. <laughs> All right. Mr. Dix, you're looking happy. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah. You asked another question, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Let's take a look. Did you have sexual intercourse with your coworker who admitted to Miss Gardner that you were pursuing her sexually? No. And Mr. Platt, you asked the same question. Yes, ma'am. And what was his response? He stated no, Your Honor. All right. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> and Mr. Platt? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Okay. <laughs> so, I see a smile on this side. I see confidence, brimming confidence on that yeah. side. Yeah, but we got one more question. Mr. Wolf, let's look at what you asked him. Since getting back together with your fiance, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Miss Gardner? No. Mr. Platt, you asked the same question. Yes, ma'am. Did you get the same response? I did. All right. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was also being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My step, right? And Mr. Platt? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I might be a little flirtatious, but... Not a little, a day, lot. I might be, but well, in the end of the day, I'm not going to cheat on you. Mr. Dix, there's flirtation 
and then there's crossing the line flirtation. Right. Everybody to some degree is a little flirtatious, whether they admit it or not. But when you cross mm -hmm. the line and start sending explicit messages, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this, sending pictures of yourself, you've crossed that line, and that's a line you can't cross. All right. Here's the thing. Relationships work when you decide to be your best self, regardless of what the person's doing. If you are being your best, Mr. Dix, it's going to force her to pull up her game. And if you being your best, Miss Gardner, it's going to mm -hmm. force him to pull up his game. Mm -hmm. But if y'all both being petty, it just devolves. So be your best you in this relationship. And don't make that decision based on what he's doing or what she's doing. Base it on, I'm here because I want you to be happy. And if you make that your focus, all this other foolishness goes out the window. You ain't gonna have the energy to ex those other women. You all have been married for 19 years, and I see from the court papers, Mr. Washington, your first name, your given name, is President. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mr. President Washington. Yes, sir. Well, whether you continue to be in office as her husband <laughs> all depends on the outcome of today's proceeding. Am I right, Mrs. Washington? Yes, you are correct. Right. You've initiated this case. Tell us why you are here. Okay. Uh, President and I have been married for 19 and a half years, and it's on the line, so I want to make sure and see if we make it to the 20th. Oh. Okay. And the reason being, President had started calling off work or saying he was calling off because he was sick, which is rare, because when I would ask him to take time off of work, it's always, no, I gotta go to work. Okay. So, okay, <laughs> then the spending of money and not paying bills. So while down here, things had got cut off, and I was trying to get to that point of finding out why, and then if I questioned him about something or even ask a question, he would threaten, like, I'm getting out, um, I I'm moving out, or you can get out. And then I would call him or text him, and my calls weren't as answered as they were previously before. But I wanted to go ahead, and when I saw that he Googled y'all through the uh, investigation, I said, well, let me give him a call and see if they'll have us here so we can clear this up. So, Mr. Washington, she's got all these red flags going mm -hmm. off that indicate that you are cheating. What do you have to say about that? This mama crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, she tracked me to, quote, unquote, what was supposed to be my ex-girlfriend's house. Okay. My idea was, let's go over there. We get over there and knock on the door, a Mexican lady come to the door. Was she that your girlfriend? No. Now, after she finds... So, she's, so she's tracked you, she's got you going to this address, mm -hmm. she takes you over there to try to catch you, and a Hispanic woman answers the door who you've never seen before, who you don't know. Correct. And so when you when she answers the door and there's this woman there who you've never seen before, what does Miss Washington do? She was asking about my ex-girlfriend. She comes to find out she didn't stay there. Mm. The house was empty for two and a half years before they moved there. They was there for three years. <sighs> I'm tired of being accused of cheating. So I you've think... gone through all this because yep. your wife thinks you're cheating. See, I'm always being accused of. This is not the first time. Is that true, Miss Washington? No, uh, this story right here, no. It goes back to an ex-girlfriend, though, that when I first met Mr. Washington, we met back in 98 through a, a relative. And after that, we started talking just briefly. Mm -hmm. But then he did have someone... I had just got out of something. Okay. So at that time, I kind of didn't want to engage in a relationship, but I didn't mind being friends. Well, yet you all are married. So what did he do to get <laughs> you from the friend zone um, over here to the wife a dream, zone? A dream from uh, my son's father um, at the time said, give him a chance. So he literally was the man of your dreams. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. He <laughs> came to me in a dream. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> this guy... Okay. All right, I'm gonna let you have that one. You let me have that one? I'm gonna let you have that one. But you're here today because you think he's cheating. Some recent stuff since being here in Georgia, yes. I've noticed uh, him communicating with another person. Okay. So I saw that number, I called, and when I called, I had written a script. So I, in that script, I was like, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm calling, and if you do this survey, I'm gonna send you a gift card. So... And so when you call, <laughs> who answers, a man or a woman? A woman. Okay, so you find this number in this phone, and you're like, I'm gonna call this woman. Yes. And I've got... I'm gonna call this number. Yes. And I've got this script. I'm gonna see what information I can get from... Yes, Your Honor. 
All all right, right. Because so he was acting suspicious. So when I called, the young lady was giving me all the information. We were going over, I was going over the questions and the prompts with her, and she was answering them. I had her address. Only thing was, her name didn't sound familiar to anybody I may have known, but I told her if she refers a friend, then the increase on that card would increase for her. <laughs> so well, what kinds of questions were you asking her? Um, I asked her what was her favorite radio station. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> she's, hey, she's wait a minute. I have never, in, in the history of being up here on this bench, we have not had the investigator slash telemarketer. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she had a script. I don't have to be Wait, thorough. She put her back into this company. She, did. she was she like, did. okay, let me see how I'm gonna I am so, duly impressed. So, hello, my name is... And then what did you say? Um, I gave her a name. Uh -huh. And then I told her that I was calling to get a survey about her favorite radio station, TV station, whatever, you know, she is into, type of entertainment. Somebody I gonna call you for a job. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I had it all together. So, by the end of our conversation, I asked her would she like to refer a friend to get more. So, that hyped her up. And she was like, yeah. And she had a friend. And she named off this friend because I, when I got to her, she said, I said, well, does she have a number? No, I let her use my phone to make calls out. She usually goes out and calls her men friends from my phone. Okay. Oh, she didn't God. have a phone. She lived directly across the street because I had already peeped out the address after I got it. I peeped out the area. And one evening when we were in an argument, I said, well, come on, I got somewhere for you to go. So when we got in the car, I had his two pair of pants and three shirts in the back. As he always say, when he gets ready to go, I'll take my three pair of pants and my two shirts with me. So I had it in the back of my SUV. And then we proceed to her house. I get out as he sat in the truck. I go and knock on the door. I tell her who I am. Because she kind of knew who I, you know, knew who I was because we all grew up in that same area. So I said, well, can you come out and speak? She came out and spoke. And I said, well, I have his stuff in the car if you'd like for him to come down here. Because remember, I'm the wife, so I got your social security number, I got things. So I'm gonna make it comfortable for wherever you go and lay your head at so you don't have to come back to mine. At that point, she told us that she had a boyfriend. I looked at the president again and said, oh, did you know she had a boyfriend? He said, no, I didn't know that. I said, well, girl, why didn't you tell him you had a boyfriend? Because you knew he clearly had a wife. Yeah. Now, now, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what did she say? She said, oh, well, you know, I, 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 I that, that's all she said. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I. Because there was nothing going on. That was my bid was partner, and that was it, and that's all. You didn't feel like you were busted? <laughs> busted for what? Playing cards? That's your story? That's, that's what you're sticking story, to? And I'm sticking to it. All right. I'm gonna okay. ride and die with it, and my buddy gonna come out here and tell you the same thing. I'm gonna ride or die. <laughs> all right. Miss Washington. Yes. You said that there were other things that you've seen while you've been taking care of your family member. What else have you seen? While being here in Georgia, taking care of that relative, I noticed some things that just didn't sit well. I was like, well, nine hours here? Why is he here for nine hours? Okay. Okay. I didn't say anything at the time to him because I'm like, it's just, you know, one location. But I see everywhere else he's been in that day. So is he so, with you at this time? No. I, no, he, she's... He's back at home. I'm here okay. with the relative. All right. So, therefore, I'm calling him to let him know this, that, hey, I found this out or this is what I heard while being away and I shouldn't hear that, so I'm coming to address it to you. Every time I do... Oh, oh, there you go, starting that stuff. I ain't got time for that. Or he'll hang up, wouldn't answer the phone no more. But the most recent one was I saw that uh, it was showing, like, our house. Like, he may be here on, at our house. And then when I could go ahead and see his locations of where he would be at, it would ping into that direction off of a street that's not far from our house. And then when we go into the GPS history, because I did it off of Google Maps, as well as Facebook has a location. OK. And now, two locations, two different things is not going to tell you a lie. Okay. Two different sources. She's so, 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 so your two sources told you the same information? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, How far away is that from your house? Just a couple of minutes. It's not far at all. You can walk. Oh, you can walk it. Uh huh. If you if you like to walk it, it's not that far. So you think he's <laughs> messing with somebody who's pretty close to you? Yeah, I don't know who who it may be or had any inkling because, like I said, I thought we were fine. I didn't know until I found this stuff and I presented it to him. But it's always an argument when you try to get answers. 
How many times has this address come up in uh, your So GPS far that, I, that, I, that some said get up and be nosy, twice that I seen. It could be more, but I only saw those two that stuck out because of the times that they were. The first time was for nine hours. Then the second time was from 12 midnight to it's time for him to go to work. He went and went to work from that location. Oh, oh. Right. Mr. Washington, Mr. President Washington. <laughs> Who are you visiting at that address from 12 midnight till it's time for you to go to work in the morning? That's a good question. I ask I, good questions. That's why I, I'm up here. I, I ask good questions. I can't answer that, Can sir. you give me a good answer? I can't answer it. I don't know. You got to ask Miss uh, GPS over here. No, we asking you. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know who you spending like, the night with? Like I say, from... I want to spend the night with nobody. Well, why were you at that address from 12 midnight because till it's time for you to go to work in the morning? It was not 12 midnight. Okay, wait. My little nephew called me. He got a little lawn shop, a little lawn where he go cut grass and stuff. So he asked me to go help him cut that grass. I have never cut my grass at 12 midnight. And that was, and that's the reason I say I don't know. <laughs> but when my boy come out here, we got, we gonna have everything okay, straight. Okay, but but. But your wife is convinced that you were in this area at midnight till you went to work with another woman. Mm -hmm. And if it shows that you were there from midnight to... Not just one, but two different locators said the same thing. So what you doing at midnight over there? I went over that midnight. So you're denying <laughs> the whole thing? As far as being over that midnight, yeah. And you're telling us that no woman is gonna come in here with a stain on her dress saying she's been with you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Oh. President of Washington. What's the rest? <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna say you about talking about uh, chopping down the cherry tree. He went all the way somewhere else. <laughs> I ain't worried about it, no. I'm gonna ride and die with it. And my buddy gonna come out here and tell you the same thing. I'm gonna ride or die. Okay. Mr. Cutler, here are, here's the evidence we have. Mr. Washington has the GPS locator showing that Mr. Washington is at a, another home for hours at a time, midnight to 6 a.m. to when he's going to work. And then she tracked down and did the telemarketing trick, which yeah. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> found out that the woman across the street, through her skill sets, is the person he's been playing cards with. And this is all happening while she's away taking care of a mm -hmm. family member. And for all these reasons, she believes that Mr. Washington is cheating, and she's like, we're at 19 and a half years. The question is, do we get to 20? And you know when you get to 20, you get platinum. So it's just a <laughs> lot at risk. It's a lot at risk. Am I right, Ms. Yes, Washington? Yes, yes, ma'am. All right. Judge. And Mr. Washington claims up and down that he has not been doing anything. He's standing there. He's looking very confident, very presidential, very <laughs> confident. Like, he hasn't done anything. And he sounds like he's as anxious for the results as she is. There it is. There it is. This court has done a full and complete investigation to get to the bottom of this. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Tommy Platt, to determine, is he cheating? Good day, Mr. Platt. How are you? Good, Your Honor. How are you? Doing good, thank you. Uh, you have spent 30 years as a law enforcement officer, correct? Yes, sir. And you've also been performing polygraph examinations for 11 years. Yes, sir. You've done thousands of polygraph examinations, correct? Yes, sir. So you know exactly what you're doing. I do, Your Honor. Right. Now, you performed a polygraph examination of Mr. Washington, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, when I, I began to ask Mr. Washington, um, or reviewing the questions with Mr. Washington, he stated that him and his wife um, had multiple threesomes in the past. Okay. So, um, I had to change the wording around and preface all the questions with other than what Miss Washington knows about. Yes. You asked Mr. Washington, when Miss Washington viewed your cell phone location tracker, which placed you at a house, did you have physical sexual contact with anyone at that location? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, he stated no. What did the polygraph determine? Polygraph determined that he was being truthful. All right. You're looking pretty confident, Mr. Washington. Because I told you, see, she sit up here and try to play Miss Detective. 
Not on me. Mm. All right, let's see. But there's still one, one more on. question. One more question. You asked Mr. Washington, since being married to Mrs. Washington, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than her? What was his response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was telling the truth. Mr. Washington. Could I go shake his hand and give him a thank you? Oh, if, thank if, you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Washington, you've had your moment. Miss Washington, is there anything you want to say to Mr. Washington? Uh, I would like to. I, to I told him if it comes out, the way it comes out, if it comes out that he's telling the truth, I would apologize to him. But I know what I saw and what I read. But, hey, if the test says it is, and also that we would need counseling. All right. Well, Ms so Mr. Washington, it's still true. You cannot tell a lie, President Washington. <laughs> <laughs> So we gonna make that 20 or what, Mr. Washington? Platinum. <laughs> Platinum. I'm, I'm putting it we out there. We gonna make it or what? Yeah, I got you, babe. All right. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have had to bring you to find out. Well, you should believe me sometimes. Hey. All right. You all are something else. <laughs> I'm gonna say this to you all. Yes. Um, I I'm glad that that you were being truthful yes. and that there was no deception yes. regarding these issues. Yes. That's important. Yes. Married couples surviving 20 years, that's a beautiful yes. thing. Yes. Okay? You all have been together for four years. Uh, you once lived together, but now you are staying in separate residences. Uh, Ms. Tunnell, why have you brought your boyfriend to court today? Y'all, I bought him to court because I feel like he's been cheating on me the last four years, and if he has been cheating, he got to go. Bumbar, Sayonara, he got to go. He's got it's to go. It's over. All the way over. So you are not playing. I'm not You're playing done. with him. I'm dead serious. Do you understand that? Yes, sir, and I understand. And you are here to prove... That I'm not cheating on Mrs. Tanell and that she can calm down with all the jealousy and all that so we can move forward <laughs> to a better future. So you say oh. you haven't cheated? No, no, not recently. Not, not recently. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Right. You know, the past is the past, but right, right now right. you're here to tell her, to prove to her right. that you have not cheated. That's correct. All right. What was it like when you were living together and in the beginning? When we first met, it was like love at first sight. Aww. And he's very, a very sweet person. What's and sweet then, about him? He's romantic. He buy me just because gifts. We on just because I'm trip. About he's a good provider. He's constantly... <laughs> he's just I like a good it just person. because. He is. He is. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say on that part right there. I just want to know if he's cheating or not. Right. You love him? I love Joseph to death. Aww. Okay. All right, so you believe that he's cheating. What kinds of things are you doing to try to catch him cheating? Well, I did his laundry, and I was shaking his pockets trying to get the money out, because whatever I find, I keep. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. was the rule in my house. I yeah. tell my sons, if you leave it, it's mama. So I understand that. But I found something that I didn't want to keep was some boy shorts that I know for sure was not mine. And I have an exhibit, Your Honor, that I can show and prove to you that they weren't mine. All right. Why don't you step to the plasma? Okay. Let's see. Let we, see. we finna see. I want to see. <laughs> this is mine. My size. For 10. <laughs> this is the size that I found, a four. I haven't wore a size four since I was 19 or 20 years old. Okay, so let me make sure I understand this. You are cleaning out his pants to, to wash them. Looking for money. Look yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you found more than you bargained for, right? I did. But, but they, they still not what, mine. what did you do when you found those panties? I folded them up on top of his clothes, and when he got home, I was like, Joseph, who draws are these? Because I know they're not mine. <laughs> And Mr. Laws, what did you say? We said, these ain't my draws. They must be your sisters, because ain't nobody else been in here. That's what he hit me with. They must be my sisters, because he know I got a lot of sisters. So he had to use them to cover his track. During Christmas... What had happened Her was... younger siblings <laughs> came and stayed with us for the holidays. And you don't believe they're your sisters, either? I, my sisters don't wear boy shorts. They're, they're, they're little girls. They don't wear boy shorts. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Please you step come back, back to your podium. Thank you. Mr. Laws, I gotta say, your uh, explanation is weak. It's weak. The truth has set me free. All right. Please tell me this is all you have. <laughs> no, ma'am, I have more. Okay. What does that look like? So, one time, I was stealing money at the stash, but I found some condoms. So, again, you didn't find more than you bargained for. Yes, ma'am. You went up to the... You went to the backup stash and found condoms. And I knew they was condoms. I could smell a condom a mile away. <laughs> I knew they was condoms. <laughs> Okay, yeah. how you get how that you... talent that right. you can smell a condom a mile away? We don't use them, so at the time we were together, so I knew that he had been cheating. I found the rubbers. He lied and said it was his best friend condoms. And of course, the best friend lied with him. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, they mine. They, yeah. So when you talked to him about that, what did you say, Mr. Laws? Why were you in there? Okay, but you let your best friend keep his condoms where you keep your extra cash? Well, no, it wasn't the same spot. But I, that's where I put it so I know where they were so I could give it back to them. Okay. if I lost them and I was like, I don't know where they came from, this would have been bigger than... All right, it. so you're saying your best friend left his condoms at your house, you saw him, knew that if she found him, it was going to be a big to-do. Right. And so you put them up so she wouldn't find them. Right. And she and found them. found them anyway, yeah. Uh, and it's a big to-do. <laughs> Same thing. That's not all I found, Your Honor. I done found... We was laying in the bed one day talking and I went in the drawer to find something because I did stay with him and went inside the drawer, and it was this little bottle of cheap perfume that I knew wasn't mine, because I don't wear it. It breaks me out. Mr. Nell, you do a lot of snooping. Yeah, don't she, though? <laughs> don't she? Uh, you, but... Wait, no, you... <laughs> you... You do a lot of snooping. Well, Is my that... friend no. called me Go-Go Gadget. Whatever you want to find out, I can find out for you. But, let, but you know what, Mr. Color? In each of these instances, she wasn't snooping. None of these were truly snooping. These were like, oh, my goodness, I'm falling over clues. The ends don't justify the means, though. Yeah, they do. No, they, they do. don't. Uh-uh. We're gonna have to agree to disagree. Okay. And then I have other things that happened. Like, one time I went to his job to see my baby because I had missed him, just wanted to see him in the area. It was a girl up there. Was she a co-worker? No, nah, she wasn't no co-worker. <laughs> So, how do you know she was there to see Mr. Laws? Well, they was all in each other's face, smiling, and you know. And when I got out the car, she... I asked her who she was, and she was like, I'm his woman. I'm like, no, that can't be possible. Oh, Because well, I'm his woman. Tell me about that, Mr. Laws. How you explain that? She got to be crazy. Because, <laughs> uh, I work on air conditions. So, yeah, I was talking to a lady, and I was explaining to her about her systems and everything, how it works, showing her in the phone. <laughs> When you talking to somebody about an air conditioner, you don't do all this and do this and smile and all that. She well, if was she was close. flirting, that well, if you're trying to get a discount, flirt. you might do that. Well, she don't right. need no discount. She was yeah. finna go to the hospital. What's throwing me is why some random person whose air conditioner you're working on mm -hmm. would say anything remotely close to, "We've been together for three years. He's my man." Yeah, see, me too. I wouldn't... So, I don't understand he, that either. He's got questions too, cuz. I don't understand that either. <laughs> what, yeah, so hey, what was your you relationship hear... with this woman with the air conditioner? Oh, she was just a customer. Just a customer? Just a customer, that's all. <laughs> all right. So, Ms. Tennell, after all of these accusations, why did you stay with him? Because I love Joseph. Aww. We had two babies together that passed away. Aww. And he... We took it... That's when our relationship kind of took a turn a big turn. So, it affected both of us and our family members as well. And then we tried again, and we lost another daughter last year. Yeah. Wow. But so, you, you, all got... have, you all have had some emotional roller coasters. Right. We have. And you're <laughs> fighting to make this work because you all have been through some stuff together. Yes, Sean. But you love him. I love Joseph to death. So, Mr. Laws, what has this done to you? You've heard what she's going through emotionally. Pretty close to the same thing. After the, after the baby, I tried what I could do to keep her, you know, motivated and on her feet so she wouldn't get too depressed. But af after she got on her feet, it's like she got with her friends and forgot all about me. So, I love her, but she's crazy. Like, she... <laughs> all right. She's real wild. She done cut tires, threw eggs. Oh. It's like... It's, it gets... She, she, it gets she cut eventually. tires. That's how I say that. Yes, sir. What do you mean, cut tires? Oh, I, I'm my work van. She slashed one of my tires. I had to pay for that. That was 230 So... You, you slashed the tires on his work van? Yes, Sean. Okay. Why did you do that? 
I That's was old school. Mad. <laughs> if I had a bet, I would have knocked all the windows out. Okay. <laughs> so were you cutting the tires and throwing eggs because of other women? I think we got. I, it was an inbox or something that made us get into it. I read everything. I detail everything. You all have been together. You clearly love each other. You clearly want to be together. But you've got this issue you've got to work through. To get to the bottom of this, we have done a full social media analysis of Mr. Laws. And we have the result. Okay. Uh, the court would like to call cybersecurity expert Mr. Gregory Evans. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Evans into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. Gregory. Yes. Mr. Evans. Good morning, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. How are you today? <laughs> Doing great. Good. Good to see you. Okay, you did a full forensic examination of his tablet. Yes, I did. And what kinds of things do you look for when you're doing a full forensic examination? We go through pictures, social media, and then we pull up everything that's been deleted as well. Mr. Evans, uh, Ms. Tennell was concerned about Mr. Law's Facebook inbox. Did you find anything incriminating? We did a full investigation of the defendant's social media accounts, and I found that he's been a very, very busy man, Your Honor. I found several conversations between the defendant and other women who's not his girlfriend, Ms. Tennille. Okay, so can you share your findings with the court? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Law starts off with, you're gonna have to take some pics of me so I can post some new. The young lady replies, I ain't got time to fight nobody's girlfriend. She knows. She done heard. Mr. Law replies, I'm single. Oh. And how long ago? That was six weeks ago, Your Honor. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Laws, did you tell this woman that you were single? Yes, sir. At this time, we were, at that time, we were separated, so that is single to me. So separated is single to you? Yes, sir. Mr. Nell, did you think, think you, you were single? single? No, Your Honor, I didn't. Is that the only woman he's been communicating with? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't stop there, Your Honor. There was another young lady he was communicating with five weeks ago. And this is different from this first lady? This is different from the first lady. Okay. Okay. Mr. Law starts off with, cute self, when are you going to take me serious? Young lady replies, don't you have a GF girlfriend? See, everybody Mr. Know. Mr. Laws replies, I did, but it's not a relationship anymore. And again, Mr. Laws, you thought you were single at that point. I did. We were not separated, Your Honor. We are Our... not separated. Please tell me that's all you found. Come oh, on girl. with it. <laughs> Come on with it. You... No, it's not, Your Honor. I found a, a conversation which was two hours long between the defendant and another young lady that started at 11.23 p.m. This wow. is the conversation. You know I've been wanting some of you. And that was Mr. Law there. It continues, yeah, that's all you want, the young lady says. Mr. Law replies, that's the best way. The young lady, what the? What that's supposed <laughs> to mean? Question mark, question mark behind that one. She's and Mr. Law says, feelings complicate things. <laughs> Mr. Right. Law, what you got to say about things. that? Well, I wasn't trying to move on to nobody else. Right, because feelings complicate things. Right, right, I was single, so I ain't want to jump right into another relationship. So. But you just wanted to hit it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know so, them with his comments if he just wanted to hit it. Right. All right, so did you hit it? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. You sure? Positive. You're saying that's as far as it went? That's as far as it went. Conversation. Keep breathing, please. Pretty please. <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is the court has ordered a polygraph examination for Mr. Laws, and we have the results. Ron, would you please escort former special agent of the FBI and licensed polygraph examiner Kendall Schull into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Schull. Mr. Shell, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. All right, it's good to see you. Have a seat. You performed a polygraph examination on Mr. Laws, is that correct? I did, Your Honor. All right. Uh, the first question he was asked was, have you had sexual contact with a woman whose underwear Ms. Tennell found in the laundry? What was his response to that question? He answered, 
No. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. <laughs> Mr. Nell, does that make you feel better? I want to hear the rest of it. Mr. Mr. Laws, he's, he's Mr. smiling. Yeah. Oh, well, I told you, I, I know. All right, I know. Because that's what I've been saying the whole time. You're, you're convinced? Yeah. Okay. That's... So, Mr. Shell, did you find out anything else as a result of your examination of Mr. Laws? Yes, I did, Your Honor. And what was that? Mr. Laws admitted to me that he had had sex with another woman a few months ago that Ms. Tunnell doesn't know about. Oh. 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 I'm gonna let you. Yes, you sir. were feeling, you know, very smug a couple well, of minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So when I asked you if you had had sex with any of those women... It wasn't one of those. It was somebody else? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Okay. You had sex with some other woman that we haven't even heard about until now. That's right, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Just... Nell. You have the truth. It's, it's a hard truth. The question is, are you going to stay? No, I'm finna cry. Tell him how you're feeling, because I can see it all over you. My feelings hurt. Real bad. I'm sorry, Red. It wasn't... It, it wasn't to hurt you. It wasn't to make you feel no kind of way. It wasn't... I mean, it wasn't nothing negative towards you. It wasn't... It wasn't for that. I apologize for that. Well, what was it? I had to go get some love from somewhere. I mean, it wasn't coming from home. So... Yeah, but when you argue, when you're in a relationship, you're gonna argue. That not, just comes with the territory. Not that doesn't like, mean you go jump in bed with somebody else. I understand it. I understand it. Do you really? I really do, honestly. I understand it. Cutler. But when we were together, it never happened. Let me just say this, Mr. Cutler, and I'm gonna say this to you. My grandmother told me a long time ago, you gotta fight right. We all need to be careful about this thing, because it will say things and get us in trouble. <laughs>